name is Michelle. Welcome to the second lecture unit of Energy. The objective today is that students know the unique features of a plant cell, overview of photosynthesis and components of a chloroplast. Here we have a picture of chloroplast that can be seen of an Elodia cell taken with iPhone 4S uh, by one of my students through a compound light microscope at 400x magnification. And then we're going to start off the introduction to photosynthesis with a picture of bromates in a forest. These flowers here are native to California, the chocolate lily, Fritaria biflora, the California fan palm, and our beloved California poppy, the Echeveria, which lies in the succulent plant family, and the lovely lupin. So what do these plants have in common? You're like, well, yeah, they're plants. Not only they are plants, but they contain specifically plant cells, in which we are focusing on today. So let's compare the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell. As you can recall, there are many components to an animal cell. Yet, what is unique to an animal cell? There are two components that are unique to an animal cell that are not found in plant cells. I'll give you a few seconds, see if you can find them. And if you thought centrosome and lysosome, you are correct. And just as a reminder, lysosome are recycling components of a cell. So let's look at a plant structure. What is unique to a plant structure? Remember, there are four things that are unique to a plant structure. Let's see if you can find them. Let's start with the obvious, the chloroplast. Chloroplast has chlorophyll, which makes most plant cells have that green color. They also have peroxisome, which is the lovely cousin of the lysosome, the recycling component of the cell. Then we have the vacuole, which stores energy and water. Then we have the cell wall, which provides additional structure to a plant cell. Plant cells. A plant cell, whether they not have and have, as a quick review, it lacks lysosomes and centrioles. It also has chloroplasts, which makes food in a process called photosynthesis, which we will talk about later on. Peroxisome, very similar to lysosome, which they will digest unwanted components or mutated components of a cell. The large central vacuole is, acts like a storage place for the food, which is glucose and water of a cell. The last thing, but not least, is the cell wall, and the cell wall provides additional structural support. This is why in a hypotonic solution, a plant cell does not burst. It will keep its structure because of the cell wall and become turbid. Introduction to photosynthesis. In general, the photosynthesis is you take sunlight with carbon dioxide and water and you get oxygen and glucose. So with the photosynthesis is a complex chemical process of changing sunlight into glucose. So how does the leaf absorb sunlight? You think, oh, white sunlight, yes. No, sunlight is actually a combination of multiple colors. It has multiple wavelengths, red, uh, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Roy Biff, if you think of it that way, back into physics. To take white light, and if you take it to a certain material and, re material and refract it, you'll be able to see the different wavelengths that composes the 
And let's look at this apple here. How do we know that this apple is red? Well, the obvious answer, the conventional way of thinking, is because we can see that it is red. The unconventional way of thinking is that uh, we see the color red is because it's reflected. The apple itself will absorb the colors of all the other colors in the spectrum and reflect back the color of red and that is why we see the color red in apples. So we take that concept, what we learned, to explain why leaves are green. Chlorophyll has the green pigment and one of the other reasons if you think about it, it absorbs all the light, the white light, the violet, the blue, and the red into the leaf itself, and then it will reflect out the green. So chlorophyll is a pigment found in chloroplasts to absorb mainly violet, blue, and red light. The chloroplast itself, the actual cells, is a plant cell organelle that has photosynthesis ability. If you look here in this cell sample, there are tons of little chloroplasts within the cell. A leaf alone can have over half a million chloroplasts, and inside each chloroplast has seven components. Just so you won't forget, the other components to a plant cell that you won't forget the function of each one. Remember in addition to the parts of an animal cell, the plant cell has a cell wall, a vacuole, the grana, the thycoloid, the stroma, and the plasma demata. The plasma demata are uh, areas, a window in which liquids can pass through in between the cell walls. So what makes a chloroplast? We have the inner and outer membrane which protects the chloroplast but also creates an intermembrane space which later on we'll learn it makes additional energy through the tra electron transport chain. The granum which is singular for grana are little thycoloids stacked up like pancakes and they can be found there. And thycoloids are where light dependent reactions happen and they also contain chlorophyll. That's when the actual light dependent reaction happens. And it's shown here in two different diagrams. The stroma are gel like material in between the grana and it is found here in both different renditions. And also in the lower right hand corner you will see the cross-sectional picture of electron microscope of a chloroplast. In photosynthesis, what is generally photosynthesis? Well, we have the sun with carbon dioxide and water, which will produce our glu glucose and oxygen. It is one of the most important chemical processes on Earth. Without photosynthesis, we would not have almost 30% of our atmosphere in diatom form of oxygen. And that most animals that are heterotrophic would not benefit or survive very long without it. Well, in a chemical reaction, it takes about six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of water, when going through photosynthesis, you have one molecule of glucose and six uh, diatom molecules of oxygen. As an overview, we have light energy, carbon dioxide, producing sugars and water, and also using the water in the environment. In photosynthesis, it's two reactions. One is light-dependent reaction. One is the Calvin cycle. In light dependent reaction, you take water, ADP, and phosphate and NADP, and you will get out oxygen, ATP, and NADPH. In the Calvin cycle, they take the byproducts 
of the light dependent reactions ATP and NADPH and carbon dioxide and then we'll produce more ATP and glucose. So we're running where did the oxygen go? Well between the light reactions carbon cycle oxygen is released. And the final component is that you have more ATP and glucose. This is the end of the lecture. For you can look forward to the third lecture in the series, which will talk about more in depth of the light dependent reactions, and the fourth lecture of the energy series to talk about the Calvin cycle.